Hi! So, today I'll show you how to make a multi-tool. The multi-tool that we'll be making is going to support a dev tip, a protoflex tip, and also a raw data tool tip. Now the last one we'll simply add there to show that you can do this with any tip. Regardless of the kind of tool, any tool can be put onto a multi-tool. Let's get right into it. First, generally what I like to do is use the dev tip to first create new empty object. Then on here, I like to make three slots. One of them is going to be called visuals. One of them will be called tools. Then in visuals, we'll have two slots and in tools, we'll have two slots. Now the first slot in here is going to be dev, the second one is going to be flux. And actually we do need a third slot because our raw data tooltip. Almost forgot about that. Let's move this one over here. Alright, now we just need to grab the name and copy them over here. Great, so once we have these slots, what we're going to be doing next is actually give them numbers. So dev is going to be zero, flux is going to be one in the order offset. Now, the first time you do this, you'll see that flux will move at the end. This is because raw currently is also zero. So let's give raw the number two. And this will ensure that regardless of what you do, these are always going to be in this order. Next, on visuals, we're going to be wanting to go to attach component, transform, drivers, and in here we have the boolean switcher, and we'll simply click setup for children objects, go to tools, attach component, transform, Drivers, Boolean switcher, setup for children, then we'll make a third slot and simply call this main visual. And we'll actually set this order offset for this to negative one, so it's always at the top. All right, so now as you can see, the Boolean switcher actually makes it so we can iterate through these children here. So dev is the first one, so it's at point zero. Active index is set to zero, so dev is enabled. Flux and raw are disabled. If I change this active index to one, you'll see that flux is now enabled. Now, what we next have to do is actually make the tools. So we'll go to tools, select dev, Attach component, tools, dev tool. Next, we'll select flux and attach the protoflux tool. And lastly, we'll select raw and attach the raw data tool. Now, after we've done this, we can remove a few things from here. We'll remove the grabbable and the object root on all of these tools. because they don't need to be grabbable and the root of our object is actually the empty object, which we'll also rename to multi-tool. Once we've done this, we'll go into the slot for the developer tip, grab the visual here and put it into the main visual slot, go to flux, grab the visual, put it into the main visual slot, Next, we grab the tip reference here and put it into the visuals flux slot and the label also goes into the visual flux slot. Raw does not have any extra visuals, so we put nothing in main and nothing in visuals. And the reason that we put both of these here into main is because these are actually going to be the same. So all we need to know is the colors. So if we look at the color here, you'll see there's an overlay Fresnel and it has a driven color and everything like that. Now, if we click onto this button here, we can check what is driving it. 
and you'll see that it's actually this material thing here. So we'll just remove that. Once we remove that, this is no longer being driven. So once we have it like this, we can actually edit it. This means that if we go into here, where we, for example, have a color nicely here, like the purple, we can actually, instead of cycling these, just overwrite the color. So what we'll have to do now is go to multi-tool, attach component, tools, tool multiplexer. This tool multiplexer is actually the quote-unquote multi-tool. This will make sure that we can cycle between the tools. Now here, this list contains all of our tools. The active tool index decides which tool we're using. We can also give it a unique equip name so that, for example, when we are clicking onto it, it will show us this equip name. So if I now click onto this here, it'll say equip multi-tool because it's now called multi-tool in here. Next, what we'll do is simply grab the slot called dev where we put the dev tool on and click onto here. And what this just did is it scanned down the hierarchy of Oh, not the hierarchy. It scanned down in that slot on the components, grab the actual tool, and then simply put that in here. And we can make use of that behavior to more quickly set slot in the tools. Now, if I now equip the multi-tool, right now, I'll have a dev tip. If I change this number here to 1, I'll have a regular protoflex tip. And if I change this to 2, I won't have anything because this is actually now a raw data tooltip that is currently hooked up to nothing. Just an arbitrary tool that you could do, use for anything you want to use it for. Now, one thing that's obviously currently bad is that if I change the Perflux tip, the visual is still red and things don't work properly. Now, the reason for that is because we actually don't have our references set up properly. So, Let's first go ahead and attach a component here. Actually, let's do this differently. Let's first set up the menu. So we'll need a slot here and call this menu. Because we'll need a way to switch, obviously, between the tools. And we'll use a context menu button. Then we're simply going to go in here to Radiant UI, context menu, context menu item source, and let's make a sub-menu, as well as a root context menu item. Root context menu item is how you ensure that it's on the main page here. So we'll grab the item source, slot it into item, grab the slot menu, and slot it into item slot. Once we've done that, we can make a new slot in here, and call this tool. Then, once we have the tool here, we'll again go to Radiant UI, go to Context Menu, put an item source on here. Once we have the item source, we'll go to Data, Presets, Data Preset Value. We'll first put on a Color X reference here. Then, we'll also need an integer. Once we add that, we will want a data preset. Add two entries to the data preset, grab the first data preset value, slot into here, grab the second one, and sl slot into the second entry list. Entry. Now, once we've done this, we need to hook these up properly. So, what we'll do is we'll go to main visual and grab the first visual here. And you'll see here there's a behind far color and a front color. This means we'll actually need another color X, which we'll also add into here. So first we'll grab from here and slot it onto the preset value, then grab the behind far color again and put it into here. Grab the color from the front far color, put it onto the preset value to write it to there, 
grab front for a color again and slide into the target field. This is going to make it so when these data preset values are triggered, they'll write that color to the slots that we just uh, to the fields that we just referenced. Our data preset value int is actually required in multiple places. The first place we'll need it is in here for the active tool index. Well, we'll also need it for our visuals folder and we'll need it for our tools folder. So we'll need two more of them. One, two. So then we simply grab our multi-tools active tool index, slot it into the data preset value integer, grab on visuals the active index, put in a data preset value integer, go to tools and do the exact same thing again with the last one. So now when we press this context menu button called my item, it'll write zero to all of the switchers and write red to our color. This is equivalent to switching to the dev tip. So we'll actually rename this here to dev. And also in the main thing up there, we'll rename this to dev. Now for simplicity's sake, what I'll be doing is grabbing the preset value from our first data preset value int, drag it onto the preset value of the other one, drive, go back up, preset value, preset value, drive. So now if I change this one up here, it'll change the ones down here. We can't do that for the color because these two colors may sometimes be different. So what we'll do next is we'll actually grab the name here and drag it onto the label and click drive again. So now if we change the name up here, it'll change the label. Next, I'm simply going to make this one here red for now and make a duplicate. So once we have this duplicate, the way we would make a second entry is simply rename this to flux, for example. After renaming it to flux, I can simply then go into main visual where we still have stored the purple, grab the albedo color here, and put the albedo color onto the actual, uh, where's the front far color? The front far color here. And then we grab it a second time and put it on this one here, the behind far color. You'll see that the alpha here is 0.25, so we'll re change the alpha to 0.25. This is so that the visual stays semi-consistent in color. Now that we actually already have the color values written down, we don't need the secondary visual anymore, and we just need the primary one here. Now that we have this, we can actually grab our tool, go into our My Item menu, and have Flux and Dev. One thing of note here is that we didn't change the number, which means that while it visually looks like it's changing, it's not actually changing. So let's go to data press piece of value int and change that to one. Now that we have this, we can actually perfectly toggle between flux tip, browse nodes, dev tip, open inspector. As you can see, the multi-tool is now functional. Now, one thing I've noticed that it's kind of bad that if I go into my item, it still shows us the item that we are already on. So for example, the dev tool currently, we're already in the dev tool. So why do we need the dev tool? Now, one thing you could do here is actually go to the buttons here, click attach component. Then we simply go to transform drivers, Boolean value driver of type Boolean. Find the data preset here, grab its is active state, slot it into the state here, drive it, 
set the false value to true and the true value to false. And then if you want the element to disappear entirely, you'll grab the enabled state and slot it into here. So now if we were to go into the my item, it would only show flux. But if you just want the button to disable itself, you would instead grab the button enabled and slot it into the Boolean value driver instead and re-enable that button. So now when we go into here, dev is simply disabled, so we can click it a second time. Now, depending on how many tools you have on one page, it's probably better to either just completely disable the button or just have it actually visually disabled. The upside is that it's less clutter. The downside is that buttons shift and move, meaning it's a lot harder to get muscle memory, which is very useful with multi-tools since it allows you to switch a lot more quickly depending on your switching method. So now that we have this, we can simply go to Flux, get rid of it, duplicate it again, rename this back to Flux, change the color here back to a purple, change this color also back to a purple, change the number for the, oh, that's the wrong one. Change the integer here back to one. And then we'll also change the color here to purple. Then we'll duplicate it a third time. Set this to raw. Change the color here to just be black currently. Change this color here also to be desaturated entirely. Oh, that's not what we wanted. We wanted desaturation, not value. There we go. And down here, the exact same thing. And lastly, we change the integer here to 2. And now if we grab this and we click My Item, we can go... Oh, I'll go. Let me just deselect really quickly so our laser isn't blocked. We can go to My Item and we can change from the Dev tool to the Flux tool to the raw data tool, and so on. And as you can see, the buttons will nicely disable to indicate that they are currently the active tool. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about making a multi-tool. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that obviously it's good to keep it light and just put your most used tools on your multi-tool but the sky is the limit. Any tool that exists, you can pretty much put on here. And yeah, I hope that this helps you. Uh, there is other ways of doing this. This is just the one that I personally think is the neatest. It is a bit to understand the presets here. But once you understand data preset values, data preset values are pretty much in uh, dispensable there, the singular most useful thing there is. So let's just quickly rename this here to Tool Switcher. If you have any suggestions, leave them below. If you have any recommendations for new tutorials, that is also down below in the comments. Uh, if you want to find all of these tools that I make here when I do make them, you can find them in my public folder which is in the description in my About Me. Just copy that link and paste it into the game. But yeah, I hope you liked the video. I hope this helped you. And I hope you had a nice day. Bye-bye.